Obviously, this first example isn't too much of a radical problem because those are both perfect squares. So when you're dividing radicals, your first question to yourself should be, are those perfect squares? Can I simplify that? These are, so this is simply 5 and 4. Okay, this is simply 5 and 4. Straightforward, okay? Now, they're not always going to be perfect squares. For example, B here, we've got 3 square root of 6 over 2 square root of 15. So, first thing you, after you ask, are they perfect squares? The answer is no. The second thing you should ask is, can I simplify what's under the radicals? And by simplifying, I don't mean, can I break down the square root of 6 or can I break down the square root of 15, but just looking at the numbers 6 and 15, can I simplify that quotient there? 6 over 15, does that fraction reduce? Okay, um, they are both divisible by 3. Since they are both under a square root and they're in this quotient here, we can reduce them like they were any other fraction. So they're both divisible by 3. So that gives us the square root of 2 on the top and it gives us the square root of 5 on the bottom. Now, 2 over 5, that's as far as that'll go. They aren't perfect squares. So our next step, we don't leave square roots in the denominator. So we have to do what we call rationalize this expression. To rationalize, it means we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root that's in the denominator. Just the square root part. Technically, you can multiply by the two part, but then you're going to end up having to simplify again in the end. So just the square root part. So that gives us 3 square roots of 10 on the top, 2 times 5 being 10, over 2 times 5 on the bottom. Square root of 5 times square root of 5. A square root times itself gives you just a number under the square root. Right. The 5 is still there. It's just the square root part of it is gone. And so we have 3 square roots of 10 over 10. The 10 on the bottom is not under a square root. So that's all the simplifying we can do. The only other simplifying that is an option is if um, the, the coefficient simplified with the 10. If that had been 4 square root of 10 on the top, then we could have reduced the 4 of the 10 but here, that's as far as you can go. Now, let me tell you this. If you didn't reduce at the very beginning, you would have still gotten here, okay? I'm going to do it without reducing. I'm going to show you that you get the same answer, okay? So if I just, from the very beginning, rationalize by multiplying by the square root of 15, we would have gotten 3 times, let's see, 6 times 15 is 90. Over 2 times 15. And 90 is 9 times 10. And the 3 comes out. And one of those will cancel with the bottom. Okay. We get the same answer, but I had to simplify a radical in there. Now, I'm not saying just because you uh, simplified in the beginning, you won't have to simplify a radical later on, but it's going to be a smaller number. Okay? Anytime you can deal with smaller numbers, the better off you're going to be. Okay? So if you didn't see that 6 over 15 reduced, you would still get there. It's just a little bit more work to get there. All right? Okay, so because negative 125 is a perfect cube. <clears throat> now, that doesn't mean that we won't have any simplifying to do. It just means we don't have to rationalize. So again, just like with the square roots, always ask yourself, is there a perfect cube hidden somewhere in this problem? So the cube root of negative 125 is negative 5. So those 5s can cancel. And we don't leave a negative in the denominator. So this is negative cube root of 2 over
over 3. Okay, that's 3 times negative 1. It's not 3 minus 1. Now, I noticed that on, I guess, with the rational expressions with the multiplying and dividing. Um, some people read that as subtraction. It's not subtraction. It's times a negative. Okay, so that negative, in this case, we're going to slide it to the numerator in front of the 2 root. I did. I'm sorry. It's because I went back and I modified these, and I think I had like a fourth root in here. So yes, that should be B, not C. All right, now, the cube root of 5 over the cube root of negative 25. Neither of those are perfect cubes. 25 is a perfect square. Second question is, can we reduce what's under the cube roots? We can, right? 5 over 25, those are both divisible by 5. So we've got the cube root of 1, which, what's the cube root of 1? 1, okay, so that's one less radical that we have to deal with. Um, and I really don't like that negative under that, that cube root. So I'm going to go ahead and just move it in front. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to take negatives out of cube roots. Yes, technically it's because it's negative 1 times 5 and cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. But if you just understand that if there's a negative under the cube root, it can come out. I'm good with that. Okay, now, we are not going to multiply this top and bottom by the cube root of 5 because it doesn't work quite as nicely as the square root does. The reason why the square root works is because the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25, which is 5. If we do that here, if we just multiply by the cube root of 5, then we've got the cube root of 25, which is not a perfect cube. So what we have to do when we're rationalizing these we need to multiply by the cube root of a number that will turn 5 into a perfect cube. Okay? So the, the only perfect or the smallest perfect cube that we can turn 5 into is 125, and we need to multiply by 25 to achieve that. Okay? 25 times 5 is 125. Okay? So when I do this, I'm going to move that negative that was in the denominator, I'm going to move it to the numerator, because we don't leave them in the denominator. And the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 25 is the cube root of 125. Okay, I'm just writing it so that it's clear where everything came from. And then, last thing we need to do is we need to simplify the cube root of 125 as Okay, so cube roots take a little bit more work because you can't just automatically multiply by what's under the cube root. You've got to turn that number into a perfect cube. It works with square roots because when you multiply something by itself, that, that's a square. Okay, um, so it turns it into a perfect square. So that was convenient. These take a little bit more work. Okay, so you've got to be careful with these. Yes, sir.